yesterday's history. Tomorrow's a mystery, today's a gift. And we've got a great one for you on this morning's Carolina People. Coming up next. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Waccamaw Community Foundation on South Highway 17 Business in Merle's Inlet. We're focused on living legends, and we're visiting with just one of those, the famous Maurice Williams. Good morning, Maurice Good morning. of Good Maurice morning, Williams Greg. and the Zodiacs. Yes, my pleasure. What an exciting time to get you in. Of course, this close to Christmas. Yes. With the yes. big Christmas right. CD out yeah. there in stores, Walmart, yeah. everywhere, all yes. over the place. The, uh, the DVD. The, the DVD. DVD. Excuse yeah. me. Forgive me. So but the CD also, both, okay. both yeah. out. Yeah. 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 Hot time right now. And to think of the world's largest retailer. Yes. Coming to How you, not that? the other way around, but coming to you, Maurice, can we that's, please that's get a piece That's amazing. Of, that's it, quite a blessing. <laughs> could you have ever thought of that 50 no. years ago? <laughs> no, I mean, no. Could you have ever thought about it even 30 years no. ago in no, the early stages of... Uh, no, it is it's amazing to think about. Uh, this is wonderful. Uh, Fred yeah. Shaw, who's, who was with you uh, last week when I saw you all, obviously it highlighted that not only Walmart, but also Best Buy, mm -hmm. Best as right. well as mm -hmm. BradleyHouseMusic.com. A lot of great places to pick up CDs. Exactly with Christmas right. just a few days away. It's uh, exactly right. CDs and okay. DVDs. Mm -hmm. You all are Wonderful. celebrating 50 years now. Yes, we are. Zodiacs, 50 years. A Gladiolo, Zodiacs, 50 years. It's amazing, isn't it? Actually, it's been over 50 years, but we don't Since you've been performing, that's right, yeah, yes. yeah. Yes, definitely. And, of course, you're, now you're a Palmetto State native. Amen. Be a yes, deep I ties am. in the Tar Heel State now, right? Yes. I take back my taxes there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but uh, Lancaster is my hometown. That's where I was born. Do you still have any family in Lancaster? Yes, I do. You do? I have a sister there. Is that right? And quite a few... Uh, nieces, nieces and, and nephews. I'm sure. I'm yes. Sure. Yes. And to think about Love it. <laughs> those early years there in Lancaster, and obviously reading about the, the experiences for you, so many influences there mm -hmm. in Lancaster to help open the good. doors uh, for you. Mm -hmm. Do you still have vivid memories of that, Maureen? Yes. Do you? Yes, definitely. Thank God that he blessed me to be a writer because my imagination and my memory is, is so good. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. very vivid, and I can really see things and, you know, visualize stuff and remember it very well. So when, when you are visualizing, do you also kind of see ahead or get an idea of what it's going to be like when you perform a song, oh, for yeah. instance? I Definitely. mean, can you see how it'll mm -hmm. jive with the rest now of the band? I can. Or, right, now right, I can. Right, right. Because I, I know what we can do, mm -hmm. and I like to make a song, you know, <clears throat> as I said, I'm making a song your, your, your song. Make it your own. Live with it and let it become you. You know, let it become a part of you and live with it because the audience can really feel this. Right. And be, it, it's like, you know, from me to you, the audience, right. and they can feel that. Yeah. When when the song is yours, not you, you're not just up there throwing out lyrics and stuff like that. You actually filling this song mm -hmm. as though you you live that, mm -hmm. that what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And that's what we, I love to do, you know, give it to the musicians. I like remember that. when we were filming in Florence a couple of years ago up mm -hmm. there at Francis Marion mm -hmm. University, and to hear you talk about there was an incident, of course, where you go from performing to a huge crowd and everyone into the music to not long thereafter being in a small place down in, I believe, <laughs> Louisiana, somewhere where there was virtually no one there, but you still right. made that effort to perform at the exact same level as if you yes. were performing to a giant crowd. Yes, and, and you learn that. I, I learned that at the Apollo Theater <laughs> back in the early 60s when, when we performed there, because you perform at the Apollo, the lights were on you, Greg, and you did not see an audience. As far as you were concerned, you didn't have an audience. <laughs> so you learn how to perform with just you. And you, hopefully somebody was out there, because you didn't see them. <laughs> the lights are on you, and you didn't see an audience. 
And so you learn how to perform. You do your best right. with no one, and you do the same best if there are a billion people there. You do the same best show you can do. I don't you know, learn how, that. how can you get that adrenaline pumping? I you, mean, how can you do it? You just, you you just do force it. yourself. Yeah. It comes a party. And you imagine, you, you, you always got in your mind that, man, it's crazy. Yeah, I'm back. It's back. It's back. You're going to do your best. Yeah. You know, and now you learn that. And then it's, it's, it's pretty much easy then. Wow. Pretty much easy. That is real. fascinating. No wonder I said we're kicking off we're talking about living <laughs> legends. We were together another time, obviously, there in the studio when we had another then living legend, Mickey Spillane, with us. I think yes. that week or the week before. And when you think about living legends, you oftentimes think back to your youth and what, mm -hmm. what spurned it. Would you share with viewers, Maurice, if you will, what it was in an early stage that opened the doors for you to... Well, uh, I... Uh, I, I uh, wanted to do this all my life and I went from the church choir to the high school glee club right. in Lancaster mm -hmm. and, and the glee club Mr. Sample our musical director suggested that we form a pop group <coughs> and sing and play she said well since you guys are musicians also right. you're in the high school band and you're, you're very good singers so you can sing and play so I, I played piano and, and played then and the piano and, and the trombone. And the trombone. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. And she said, you get a group where you, you accomplish yourself. You know, you play with yourself, play by yourself. And I said, okay. And so we did that with her suggestion. And so we immediately started playing high school proms. High school proms? Yeah. Uh -huh. then, we started right. doing that. And then we had a, it was a talent show at, at Lancaster High School. And uh, which back then it was a white high school, so we won that talent show. We, you we, we won it. So you weren't a uh, you were you weren't a student there at the high school. No, no. Well, this you was, just came to perform there. Yeah. Yeah, we performed yeah. there for the wow. talent show. Right. And we won that. And uh, um, there were some students there from fraternity in the University of South, at the University of South Carolina. Right. And they saw us and they got us to perform at their fraternity. And so we started performing at their fraternity in, in South Carolina, right. Columbia. Right. And then we're from there to the University of Georgia, from there to Texas and Tennessee and all over the place. And then For, we went to Nashville. Performing for fraternities all over the uh, yes. country. Yes, yes, we started doing that. And then we went to Nashville. <laughs> and uh, I had heard on the radio all, all these songs, and I said, well, we can sing that stuff. We can do that. So I called... Nash, Nashville, Nashville Records, and, talk, and spoke with Mr. Ernie Young. Ernie Young, mm -hmm. yeah. At Nashville Records, and he said, well, if you guys are ever over in the area, come by and audition. So we, we got a job over there, and we went by to audition for him, and he yeah. liked the song that I wrote called Little Darling. Called Little Darling, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So we performed that, that was in the winter of 50... Six. Now, were you the lead singer in the band then? Were you? Mm -hmm. you were well, no, I really wasn't. I had another guy singing me <coughs> named William Massey. William Massey. My buddy. And he, he was the lead singer. He didn't perform then? No, not in Nashville because his mother wouldn't let him go. Oh, come on. <laughs> Mac, I'm 16. Right. When we, when we went over. And uh, we were all young, but I, I was the youngest. So, and uh, she could not conceive the idea of us going over there and doing any good. You and William and the rest the of the The rest band. of the guys, yeah. right. Yeah. And so I had wrote Little Darling for him to sing. So when we got there, and he he wasn't there, we performed all the songs that guys were singing, and I was more of their director and all that. Right. And didn't sing, but, but I wrote the songs, and I got the guy said, well, you, you ought to sing Little Darling for them. Since you wrote it, so you can sing it, you know. And so that's that's the way Little Darling came about. Oh come on! I saw that myself. You've written that for, for uh, William. William Massey. Mm -hmm. He didn't go he on couldn't the trip. Go. Right, his, his mother, mother wouldn't let him. Wouldn't let him go. And I I, I, I sang it for for the, for Ernie Young. Right. And he liked it. And he said he came back. He said, "Well, let's chop the lyric a little bit and and make it a calypso type." And I said, "Okay." Huh. And I came up with the idea of the castronets. And the very intro. Right there on the spot. Mm -hmm. I mean, that part. And then the cowbell coming in. And then coming with the thrill on the keyboard. And 
that part. Right on the spot, please. Mm -hmm. Did yeah, it right there. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. a free. It wasn't free reign. Yeah. Because I had at home, Greg. I had a little drawing going like, like a, almost like a ballad. It was like, oh little bunny, boom boom, boom. Boom, 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 little darling, like that. Doom, boom, boom, oh, oh, where are you? So he said, well, let's pick, pick the tempo up and make it uh, calypso tight and, and speed the tempo up and <coughs> chop your lyrics right. and see what we'll come up with. So I came up with that on the, on, the, on the spot. And it came out to be what it came out to be in this wow. history now. Wow. Yeah, and it is history. Yeah, and 50, the diamonds. It really it is. Up. Fifty years later, the diamonds picked it up. The diamonds picked it up that spring. Well, that well that spring it became it. Right. Yeah, they picked up the spring, and that summer it was a hit for the diamonds. Right. right. Yeah. And it stayed on the top of the charts all oh, summer yes, long. Yes. I think I remember reading. Yeah, and it, it would have made number one. Don't be for Elvis. If it wasn't for Elvis. If it wasn't for Elvis. <laughs> Elvis would not move with that. With the song he had on the charts, which right. was number one, right? Little Darling hung right there at number two by the Diamonds, right? And wouldn't move. Elvis wouldn't move, and it couldn't go any further than number two. <laughs> I'd be, I'm, I'm sure you don't mind. We said that dang Elvis. Yeah. Oh, we don't mind. We'd be number two. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's better than nothing. That's right. So it was number two, and everybody thought it was number one, but it's, it's like number one. No. Ernie Young, he just knew. I mean, he did he know he was that in tune? Of course, you all are coming over from Lancaster. You all mm -hmm. are teenagers. Yeah. I mean, he was that in tune with what America would love. What, yes. Right. Yes. I mean, he was that. Uh, so he really, uh, he obviously, there were so many early influences from you from age five on to that point to 16. But him mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. knowing what would actually go national, international. Yes. Definitely. That's amazing. He, he saw it. He saw the dream. And uh, he, he told me, he said, uh, <coughs> he said, now my label is a local label. I only have distribution in the southeast. Right. He said, but if you let the diamonds do your song, he said, you'll become a national, international writer because of the diamonds. And I said, sure. And we decided to let the diamonds do a little drawing. Because <laughs> back then, you had to get permission from the songwriter okay, and, and the right. publisher. And he'd and be in the were, publisher, and I was a writer. Right, right. Mm -hmm. and so we let them do it, and everything he said came true. So right away at 16, he started teaching me about publishing. Huh. I said, wow. So I started learning about publishing when I was at the age of 16, Greg. 16, I turned 17, the spring of 57.